Cryorig has an excellent reputation, no doubt. From their low-profile, small-form factor C7, to their top-flow C1 Mammoth, to the R1 Cinderblock, these are all excellent coolers in their own rights, and I've reviewed and built with all of them, linked in this video's description, by the way. But for those looking into affordable yet beefy air coolers, some would say maybe the best bang for the buck, the Cryorig H7 probably comes to mind. Priced at only 35 USD, it's an excellent alternative to the ever-popular Hyper 212 Evo. It sports one less heat pipe than the Evo, but a considerably larger heatsink. Now in this case, Cryorig has yet again outdone themselves. Maybe not so much with the price of the product, but with the looks and the performance, both of those are much better with the uh, new rendition of the H7 cooler that I'm about to show you, and that is the Quad Lumi. In a nutshell, the Cryorig H7 Quad Lumi boasts four heat pipes versus three in the previous model, the same beautiful thin array and multi-zone RGB lighting paired with a white LED fan. This is one of the best looking tower coolers on the market in my opinion, and for an average asking price, it could be better, I'll admit. It's boasting a 160 watt thermal design, up 20 watts from the previous H7 cooler, full RAM height compatibility with any chipset out of the box, and support for any socket type including the latest AM4 Series 4 Ryzen. With a nickel plated copper base and 40 aluminum fins, it'll handle any consumer grade CPU on the market, even overclocked. It's also extremely quiet. But when we venture into enthusiast grade territory, I'm not talking about 7700K, 1800X, I'm talking about i9-7900X territory, that kind of CPU. How well does this cooler hold up? We all know by now how hot the 7900X runs, and that's why it's the perfect candidate for this stress test. So what happens if we stick a 160 watt TDP cooler atop a 140 watt CPU overclocked across the board to 4 GHz? Remember, a cooler's required TDP for any given CPU tends to increase exponentially as we linearly increase V-core and frequency. Now we're talking about a 10 core 20 thread CPU here, all 10 cores overclocked to 4 GHz apiece, we're talking about massive power power consumption jumps, and as a result, a lot of heat being dumped from the CPU. So think of this as a worst case scenario for the H7 Quad Lumi. This is by no means a fair test, it's not supposed to be, but this will handle any consumer grade overclock, period, okay, 7700K, 1800X, you name it, any overclock you can get with an equivalent 120, maybe even 240 mil AIO, you should be able to get with the H7 and keep temps in a similar range. So with the given settings, the i9-7900X at 4 GHz across all 10 of its cores and a standard fan curve set from the BIOS, the results in IDA64 were, uh, well, they didn't do too well at 4 GHz, I'll just say that. So right away the temperature shot up to around 90 degrees, which was a bit alarming, and very quickly uh, we reached a threshold at which our CPU began to thermal throttle. Only about 2%, I didn't want it to go any higher than that because this is a really expensive CPU and I don't want to ruin anything. So I backed off the test right away. Once it started thermal throttling, I figured that was, that was enough. Temperature across uh, at least one of the cores was 105 degrees Celsius. So yeah, 4 GHz for the H7 Quad Lumi on the i9 is uh, not gonna happen. So the next thing we did was really the only other thing we could do without underclocking the CPU, and that was run it at stock voltage settings and at stock frequencies across the board. Now, there is Turbo Boost enabled on the CPU. I actually turned on Turbo Boost Technology 3.0, which will allow a single core to reach upwards of 4.5 GHz. Just a single core though, not across the board. Uh, but that, of course, didn't happen when we stressed all of the cores equally in IDA64. So in in a few instances, a couple of cores would reach 4 GHz, but across the board, 3.8 GHz was the standard, and I ran that test for 30 minutes, and the cooler did pass with flying colors. These results shouldn't be too surprising though. 160 watt TDP cooler atop a CPU requiring a 140 watt cooler, is a, that's a green light, okay, it's okay. That 20 watt delta is actually what kept us under 90 degrees Celsius. I would say that if we had a TDP cooler matching the TDP of the CPU, then we'd probably be just on the edge of TDP junction at around 100 degrees or so. I've got to say though, I am still very impressed by the H7 Quad Lumi's performance. This is not a super beefy air cooler, but it's it's a decent size, and I expected that it would do okay at stock. I didn't think it would really allow for much overclocking headroom. Granted, most AIOs still won't allow for much overclocking headroom with the i9, and I talk about that in this video right here. Okay, so I've got my phone about the same distance away from my face as it is from the cooler, and uh, this is under full load, so this is while IDA64 is running. It's been running for about 30 minutes now, and you really can't hear the cooler at all. And this is with the stock fan curve. So if you're wondering about how loud the cooler gets under load, especially in like a worst case scenario like this with a very hot CPU, um, no, it's not loud at all, and that's a very good thing. 
So if you had any doubts about the CPU cooler's ability to keep your CPU, well, cool, all the while maintaining a relatively low audio profile, those doubts shouldn't exist anymore. All in all, I've got to say, this is one heck of an air cooler. Look, it's a bit pricey, I understand that. Anything above 50 bucks for around 140, 160 watt TDP cooler is a bit pricey, but you're paying not only for the cooler's ability to dissipate heat, but also the RGB functionality and the cohesion between the cooler and NZXT's cam software. I didn't talk much about this in the video because it's pretty much as straightforward as changing the LED config on a Kraken X62 or the NZXT Hue Plus, uh, but it is nice to see NZXT and Kraken we're kind of working together here to bring you one just really fluid uh, and well-made product. As always, you can find links to the H7 Quad Lumi and the regular Cryorig H7 in this video's description. Let me know in the comments below what you think about both and what your next air cooler purchase might consist of. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, thumbs down for the opposite. Be sure to click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Stay tuned for more content like this on the channel. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.